Amen. All right. Sit down and let me holler at you for a few minutes here. And I read one comment by some lady said she was walking through her house having troubles or something and she heard me hollering on, on YouTube. Be thankful! <laughs> and it woke her up. You know? <laughs> Amen. Well, that's good. It's good to be awakened. Sh shaken. Everybody say, Lord, shake me up. Amen. Amen. Okay. Many people have the question, how is it that I know that I am saved? How do I know that? How do I know? People are struggling with that question. They're sincere. I don't know exactly what they're looking for, a certain feeling, a certain, you know, lightning from heaven, a, an angel, or what, what are they looking for? But how do we know that we are saved, that we are children of God? Jesus said you must be born again, right? Peter called it being born of the Word the incorruptible Word of God, which lives and abides forever, born again. You're born once, and you'll be born the second time. How do we know that we've been born again? How do we know that we are? So in the book of John, if you want to read with me, Jesus, in his discourse with the disciples about the vine. You remember? I am the true vine. My father is the husband. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, it was already bearing some fruit. But my Father purges it so that it will bring more fruit. So it's already beginning to bear. So let's find out exactly what Jesus is saying. When he says that my Father will purge the branch, you are clean now through the word that I spoke to you. Abide in me. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Now he goes from more fruit to much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch, is withered. Men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. It shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, as shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I do not call you servants, for the servant does not know what his Lord does. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. 
You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. In the book of beginnings, in the book of Genesis, the Bible speaks of the birth of Seth, who was born after Cain slew Abel. You remember. And Seth, the Bible says when he grew up, it was then, at that time, that men began to call upon the name of the Lord in the days of Seth. The name Seth means appointed. Appointed. And in those days, men learn to call upon the Lord as they had not before. But there was an appointment for that. Through the lineage of Seth was born Methuselah, which was the oldest living person on earth. He lived 969 years. And during that time, he bore a son. His name was Lamech. When Lamech grew up, he was complainful about how the earth was. For it was cursed. He had troubles. Everything in life, it seemed, was against him. He had troubles everywhere. And at 182 years old, at 182 years old, Lamech begat a son. And his name was Noah. He called him Noah because the word, the name Noah means comfort. Or rest. In all of Lamech's troubles and problems of life and struggles of life, God had given him rest. When he gave him Noah. He went on to live, I don't know exactly how long his years were, very old. When Noah grew up at 500 years old. Makes you wonder what he did all those first 500 years. Huh? Man. <laughs> at 500 years old, Noah begat three sons. Now, Noah was a man's man, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> And after the flood, Noah lived another 350 years. What a man. <laughs> Noah being also appointed of God, he was a deliverer. Whom God chose. But it was during all of those years from Seth to Noah. This is my point I want to make. From Seth to the birth of Noah. 
It says that men called upon the name of the Lord. So Noah knew the Lord. He walked with the Lord and walked in righteousness before God. And Peter, 2 Peter, tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So what was he doing all those 500 years? He was preaching. And he was walking with the Lord and he was talking with the Lord. Everyone whom God calls and appoints, starting with Seth, and we'll just start from that point on. Everyone whom God appoints talks with the Lord. Everyone. Whom God has called. Praise to the Lord. Jesus said, you have not chosen me. But I have chosen you and appointed you. What did he point him to do? So that whatever you ask of the Father, He will give it to you. How do you know you're saved? How do you know you're a child of God? I ask you this question. Do you call upon the name of the Lord? And I'm talking about really talking to the Lord from your heart. Quit complaining about how you don't understand about whether or not you're a child of God. I ask you the question again. Do you call upon the name of the Lord? Jesus said, if you abide in me, in my love, as I abide in my Father's love, you will bear much fruit. And you will bear the fruit of answered prayer. And I like that. It is so wonderful to know that you can come to God in prayer And receive an answer. Amen. What is the first thing you do when you're saved? Anybody got an inkling? What's the first thing you did when you got saved? When you were born again? What happened? What's the first thing you did? You cried out to the Lord. Or you talked to the Lord. What's the first thing a baby does when he's born? He cries out. Does your heart cry out to God? If it does. God knows all about your sins. Some people act like there's something they must do, and surely there's something they must do in order to make up for their sins with God. There's surely something I've got to do or something I've got to feel, something I have to, something, I've got to go somewhere, do something to make myself sure that I'm saved. You poor soul, don't you know 
that the moment your heart cries to God, God has already brought you forth. And where does he bring you? Where is it that God brings you? He brings you to Christ. He brings you to the Savior. He opens your eyes. You were in the darkness of the world. Just like a baby in the darkness of their mother's womb. And when they were born, the mother helped to bring him forth. And when you're born again, the Holy Spirit brings you forth out of the darkness and into the light of the world and causes your heart to cry out, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's not time to be worried about whether you're saved or not. It's time to rejoice knowing that your heart is crying to God. Right. Hallelujah. 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 Take heart. Yes. Be glad and rejoice. Amen. Don't be in perplex. Perplexity. Don't be in despair. Because if you're so worried or so concerned about it, that right there is the sign that God has already called you forth. For everyone whom He has appointed, everyone whom God calls, comes to the Lord. Jesus said, all whom the Father hath given to me will come to me. Amen. Are you coming to Jesus? Yes. Are we just going to sit down and just shake our head and put our hands on our face and say, I just don't know. <laughs> Get up where you are. God has shined the light for you to see. And come to the light. Hallelujah. Let me ask you another question. Do you desire or long for the milk of His Word. My wife has given her testimony. By the way, thank God she's with us this morning. She's having a hard time with that. Not really hard, but she's getting, she's getting through it when she broke her collarbone. But she's, she's here this morning. Over and over again through the years that I've known her, she's given her testimony. Whenever she gives her testimony of, of being saved, she weeps and cries. The tears begin to well up as she tells someone about her conversion. After all these years, after all of these years, when God spoke to Noah, about the ark and the flood. If you notice, you read the story of Noah. For 500 years, he walked with the Lord. He prayed. He preached the word of righteousness in the world. But when God spoke to Noah, the whole story, read the whole story from the beginning to the end. Noah doesn't say one word. He's all ears. God does all the talking. Did you ever notice that? God talks to Noah, tells him exactly what he's going to do, how, you know, and everything, and how to do it, and blah, blah, blah. And the whole scenario, the whole story is God speaking to Noah. Yep. Noah has learned 
to listen to the Lord and wait upon the Lord and He'll show you exactly what to do and He'll give you the strength to do it. He'll give you the know-how and everything you need to do it. And all the Bible tells us that Noah just went and did what God said to do. He didn't say a word. He didn't reply. It doesn't say, show us anywhere in Scripture where He ever asked God for, to show Him anything. God just showed Him and He did it. There is a time to wait upon the Lord. There is a time to talk to the Lord and there is a time to let the Lord talk to you. And not only to pray to the Lord, but to act upon your faith. Let your faith begin to work. God called us to faith. You were saved by grace through faith. But faith is not alone. Faith works. Faith does exactly what God said to do. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. And here it is my Father glorified. If you abide in me, if you love me, if I'm in you and you're in me, you see, that's the secret. When you're with him and he's with you, God was with Noah and Noah was with the Lord. And so whatever God said to do, Noah would do it. He bore fruit of his faith. You could see his actions that he had faith in God. I mean, after all, he toiled on that thing for a hundred years. He was 600 years old when the flood was upon the earth. But when God called him, he was 500 years old. 100 years to build an ark and gather all the animals and do all that he did. 100 years simply based upon the fact that he knew that God told him that this was going to happen. He believed God and acted upon the word of God. Ain't none of you this morning a hundred years old. I don't think so. <laughs> the one word you got to complain about. Noah worked a hundred years. At five hundred years old. Noah knew the Lord. He wouldn't just, you know, Noah wouldn't just stand there one day after 500 years of living on the earth and suddenly hear his voice. He didn't know who that voice is or what the voice is or who, who's talking to him. He knew who he was talking to. Him. If you know the Lord and he was called of God, he walked with God. Like Enoch walked with God. He was so pleasing with God that God just took him out of here. He didn't die. He just translated him up into heaven. Enoch. But the Bible, the scripture tells us also that Noah was a man of faith and righteousness. He walked with the Lord. And he preached. So he knew the Lord. Jesus said, if you know me, if I'm in you and you're in me, Ask what you will. See the results of your prayer. Herein is my Father glorified. God was glorified in all that Noah did. And he saved his house, condemned the world by his actions. God is calling us Hallelujah. To bear that fruit of answered prayer. If the Lord says, no, I want you to build an ark, he must have said, okay. Then say it in Scripture. 
But I'm sure he must have said, yes, Lord. That's enough. Somebody says, am I saved? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever said, yes, Lord? <laughs> Are you so concerned about your, your salvation or your sins or your problems in life? Put that aside and listen to the Lord. Yes. Has your heart said, yes, to God? If it is, then you will bear the fruit of answered prayer. The first thing you did when you got saved was you talked to the Lord. Didn't you? What must I do to be saved? Jesus said, He that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when you did that, you saw the fruit of your answered prayer. What was that? Your salvation. And not only your salvation, but the joy of your salvation. And not only the joy of your salvation, but the peace of God flooded your souls. All of a sudden, you begin to bear fruit. The kind of fruit that you didn't have before, but now you're abiding in Christ. Now you're a part of the vine. And out comes the fruit. And as you dwell in that love and in that peace with God, God begins to snip away all those things in your life that's hindering your faith and hindering your growth and hindering your walk with Him. He's cleaning you up as you go along. And you begin to bear much fruit. And your much fruit is not only uh, the things you do in your own life, but the fruit that you bear much is when you begin to pray for others and you begin to see what the Lord is doing in their life. Much fruit. God is not only makes us concerned with ourselves, but He creates within us a concern for everyone else. A concern for our brother. A concern for our sister. God lays a burden in your heart to pray for somebody. And isn't it wonderful that when you pray, and you, you, you pour out your heart to God. And you earnestly pray to the Lord. Praise God. And you see the results of your prayer. And that person you've been praying for, God saves them, God heals them, God brings them. Something happens in their life. And that is the fruit that you're bearing. And everything that you need from God in your life, as you pray and ask God, He brings it. That's more fruit. Every time God answers your prayer, you're bearing more fruit. You say, huh? I say, yeah. Every time you need something from God, I say, Lord, I need a little bit of wisdom here to know what to do. And God gives you the answer to that. And that's fruit coming from your, in your branch out of you. Amen? Is that all right? Do you desire the milk of God's Word. Yes. If you've been created in Christ Jesus, something begins to flow, something begins to happen in you. Right, and you have a desire. When my wife was, would tell her testimony over and over again, she said, the first thing that had happened to me when, the Lord, when I found the Lord was I wanted to know more about Him. She got out her Bible and began to read. She read the Old Testament and read the New Testament and over and over again she couldn't get enough. She wanted to hear more. She wanted more and more and more. And it's been that way ever since. I ask you the question, do you have a desire for the Word of God? Like the baby who desires the milk from her mama's breast. Because that's the only thing that can satisfy the hunger. She cries. 
in the middle of the night, a baby will cry and they don't know what's wrong with it. She don't know what's wrong. The baby doesn't know what's wrong with it. Maybe all it wants to do is for the, for the mama to come in and pick him up and hold it and embrace it and cuddle it and love it. And suddenly it quietens down and goes back to sleep. Or maybe it's hunger. Or maybe it needs its diaper change or something. It needs, it needs, it needs help. It's always crying out. It's always wanting. And the mother is there to see that its needs are met. And she does so out of love and concern. And she watches that baby grow. And she gets so attached to that baby. She doesn't want to be away from that child. Day and night. Week after week. Month after month. Year after year she watches her baby grow. And develop. Giving it everything that it needs to sustain its life. And to comfort her. Do you desire the comfort of God? Do you desire for God to pick you up and to hold you and to tell you how much He loves you? And you can feel His embrace. You can feel the warmth of God's love in you. Does that happen to you? Is that in your heart? Is that in your mind? Is that what you want? You want God more than you want anything else. And there's sometimes you don't know what it is you want. You just cry out, Lord, I need you to help me. Hallelujah. My God, there's been times when I prayed and I didn't know what to pray for. And I just said, Lord, I don't know what I want, but you know what I want. You know what I need. And I cry to you, God. Does God hear me? Is God there? Is He listening? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, Lord. Lord says, you need me. Now, if that's going on inside your spirit, if that is the longing of your heart, if you desire God in your life, it's because God has brought you forth out of the darkness. He hasn't left you alone. When a baby's born, he's not left alone. He's immediately brought in to the mother family, to the love, to the care. It's all important. There's nothing more important than the baby. Isn't that wonderful to know there's nothing more important to God than you? There's nothing more important to Him than you. So go ahead and cry. It's all right. That's a sign that you're His. That's a sign that God has called you forth. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear fruit so that whatever you ask, Lord, I need you. You will have it. Lord, I'm hungry. You will have it. Lord, I'm thirsty. Jesus said, I will give you water springing up into everlasting life. Lord, I feel burdened down and lost. The Lord says, I took your sins away at the cross. Hallelujah. Come to me. Come to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Noah means rest. And everyone who enters into the ark enters into rest. Everyone whom God has called enters into rest. Into his care. Glory to God. Man, you ain't got a thing to worry about. God's got you in his care. He's got you in his hand. He's got you, man. Hallelujah. You belong to him. And thank God, as much as you know that God cares for you and watches over you and, and takes care of you, you still got questions and you still have wants and desires and needs. Just like a child when it grows up in the father's house. And whatever that child needs, the father and the mother sees to it. It doesn't really have to worry about a thing because all they have to do is say, Papa! Mama! And what they need is supplied. You may cry, you may hurt, you may fall. But rejoice because you're in the Father's house. You may not know what to do. That's okay. You're not the, lightest, uh, the brightest light in the, in the room. It doesn't matter. God's got a lot of dull kids. That's okay. You're not alone. <laughs> You're not alone. You're not the only one. You know, goes back here. See that? We're not alone. And I'm so glad. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I got some brothers. They're just like I am. I got some sisters. They're just like me. But the good thing is, when I look at you, I see a family resemblance. <laughs> Whom does the father love most? The one that really looks a whole lot like him. The one that's a whole lot like him. I guess the Lord loves us all the same because we look like him and we act like him. We have our shortcomings. We have our faults and failures. But that's okay. We're children in the house of God, in the family of God. And the light of God shines upon our face. Hallelujah. And we're not, we might not be the best spoken are the best preachers, or the best teachers, or the best singers, or the best musicians, or the best anything. But thank God, I'm not going to sit down and cry about it. I used to do that long years ago. Man, I can't play that guitar. I ain't no good. Look at that guy playing. I can't play like that. I still don't claim to be a piano player, and I'm not a piano player. I mean, you don't want to hear a real piano player go to the studio in Benville. You'll find one there, boy, they just, I mean, tear it up. But I'm not going to sit down and cry in my sleep. I'm not going to sit down and quit. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to bang it for Jesus. Amen. If you can't sing, holler for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need help, call upon the Lord. He'll help you to do it. Yes, yes. Bearing much fruit. Yes. Praise God, hear somebody sing in the church and they can't hardly carry a tune. Say, what are they doing? They're bearing fruit. <laughs> it's kind of hard coming, but it's coming out of there. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm not much.
much of a prayer warrior. It doesn't matter. Get out and talk to the Lord and bear that fruit to God. Let God hear your heart cry. It's not so important than whatever anybody else thinks about you. We're all in this together. Hallelujah. You know, I've known people that when you ask them to pray a prayer, especially when we go out to eat somewhere, they pray a prayer and they pray for about 30 minutes. <laughs> Next time you go out, I said, don't ask him to pray the prayer. And say, Bob, will you do it? <laughs> Hallelujah. But can you imagine the fruit that guy's going to bear after praying for 30 minutes of the day? Hallelujah. You want to see fruit in your life? Seek the Lord. Come to the Lord. And it's a joy. You know, it's a lot of Christians act like, oh, I got to get out and pray again. Oh, I got to take time to pray. I got to pray. It's a, it's a privilege to pray. Because when you really think about it, Jesus said, when you pray, whatever you ask, he'll give the Lord and the Father will give it to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, oh boy, Lord, I need this. Come to the Lord. So, Lord, you know what my need is. I ask you for it. Thank you for it and go on. And sooner or later it shows up. Right. How many times have I prayed and asked God for things and it's, it's a miraculous they just come about? Right. One time I lost a knife I had. It was a, a special knife. I had it for a long time and I lost it. A pocket knife. And that's, that knife meant something to me. It was special. I lost it. The Lord help me to find that knife. <laughs> please, please help me to find that knife. I mean, that was that was my that was my little knife, my special knife, and I I didn't want to I didn't want to live without it. <laughs> I mean, what am I going to clean my fingernails with? Or I mean, you know. What am I going to whittle the wood with, Lord? I need that knife. <laughs> and no sooner I prayed, the Lord says, look down over there. And I looked down, there it was. And that's just a little thing. Is God concerned about the little things in your life? Yes, He is. Hallelujah. Well, what, how did that help me? Boy, I, I just, ooh, glory to God. Man, if God can help you find your knife, He can save your soul. <laughs> if God can help you find things, He can find you. Hallelujah. He knows the desires of your heart. Praise God. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He will give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Am I saved, Brother Bob? Do you delight yourself in the Lord? Is it a delight for you? Or do you dread coming? Is it hard, a hard laborious thing for you to do? Or you, do you delight? Think of somebody you love very much. Any individual, maybe in your family, in your life, somebody you've known, some special person in your life that you've known. You really love them. You think the world of them. And every time you see them, you're just so happy. You just, you just thrill, man. You just, you got to stop everything and go talk to them. How you doing, man? It's good to see you. Sit down and let's talk a little bit. Man, it's been a long time. I've been thinking about you. How you doing, man? Think of God the same way. Think of the Lord the same way. Because he's standing there. He's waiting. Can you imagine what the Lord is going to say or do when he comes back? 
Who's he coming back for? Those that are looking for him. Why are they looking for him? Because he means so much. He means everything to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Jesus was a praying man. Every man that God ever called was a praying man. I wrote some names down here. Abraham. God called Abraham. And Abraham talked to the Lord. Abraham believed God. Abraham acted upon his faith because he believed God. And Abraham was the friend of God. Abraham talked with the Lord. Moses was called of God, appointed. But he was a man who communed with God. And look what he did. Look at the fruit he bore. Look at the work he accomplished. Look at all that God did through him. He had fellowship with God. He would rather be in God's presence than any place. Samson. Samson? Yeah. As wicked as he did and as wrongfully as he acted, he talked with the Lord. He prayed to God. He was appointed of God to be the judge in Israel, to deliver his people from the Philistines. A mighty man who fell in a trap and got his eyes put out. But nevertheless, he called upon the Lord and God heard him. You may fall in a trap today, but if you belong to God, you'll call upon the Lord. You may make mistakes in your life, but call upon the Lord, He'll hear you. You may go the wrong way, but if you're called of God, call upon the Lord. Is it in your heart to call upon Him? Are you saved? Are you born again? Do you abide in that place that Jesus talked about? He that abides in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'd rather be a doorkeeper, David said, in the house of my God, than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Is that in your heart? You'd rather be near where God is? Hallelujah. Would you rather feel His presence and know that He's there, right there? than to be any place else. I'd rather be in His presence than to eat at McDonald's. I'd rather be among those who are like I am in the Lord and love God like I do. And to dwell in the tents of this world. I'd rather be among God's people who, like I, feel their need for God 
and love God and want to serve Him and please Him and to do their best for Him because they love Him, because He loves them, than I would to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Is that in your heart? Then you'll know. God's called you out of this world. David was a man after God's own heart. Read the Psalms. It's full of the prayers of David. Elijah, the prophet of God, prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And God withheld the rain. What was it? Three, three and a half years. He prayed earnestly again. And God sent the rain. Elijah was a man of prayer. He was a man that asked God because he dwelt with God. And look at the fruit he bore in his life. And all the prophets that followed him. And Jonah, look at Jonah. Jonah prayed a prayer one night in the, in the belly of the well, the bottom of the sea. But God heard Jonah when he cried. And he spoke to the fish. And he vomited him out on the dry land. And the moment he got on the dry land, he took off running. <laughs> I'm going to get out here. It ain't going to happen to me no more. I had enough of that whale's belly. I ain't going to go there no more. Whatever you want, God, I'll do it. <laughs> See, when you're dealing with God, when you're dealing with, let me say this, I'm going to let you go. When you're dealing with the Lord, it's real. Whenever you deal with God and do better with God, it's going to be something real. God's going to let you get a hold of something that's real. Hallelujah. You're going to have a real experience when you get with God. Right. Hallelujah! You'll have a real experience in life when you get with the Lord. Right. Woo. Hallelujah! And look at what blooms. Look at what happens when you get with the Lord. Herein, he said, is my Father glorified. Because when I'm living in you and you're living in me, and that love abides in you, the things of God are going to be unveiled in your life. And the understanding of His Word is going to, is going to enlighten you. And you're going to grow and you're going to know and you're going to prove those things that are good and excellent and perfect. You're going to know the will of God in your lives. So that when you pray, you know that when you're praying, it will be according to the will of God in your life. And when that happens, the fruit's going to come forth in your life. And you're going to be very, very fruitful in everything you do. And everywhere you go, everybody you talk to, every prayer you pray, every sermon you preach, every song that you sing, you're going to be fruitful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you're doing it as under the Lord and you know what's going on. You know what's going on. Somebody said, Brother Bob, what are you doing up here? You may not know what I'm doing, but I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, then people down in that church shouting and singing like that for What's going on? People are crazy. They may be crazy to you. You don't know what's going on with them. But God knows. And they know what's going on with them. Right. It's time you begin to wake up and realize what's going on with you. Right. You've been in la-la land long enough. It's time the twilight zone. It's time to wake up and realize what's going on in your life. Praise God. Oh, I'm a plant. I'm supposed to grow. 
Look at my limbs. Ain't that pretty? You're going to wake up one day and realize what you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you're going to realize, yeah. Okay, Lord, I see what you're doing. And I thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. God, just keep doing it. Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Whatever God's going on in my life, Lord, you're doing it. You're making it happen, Lord. And I just want to I just want to thank you. I love, thank you for making me part of what you're doing. What are Christians? I'll tell you what they are. They are part of what God is doing in the earth. They're part of God's garden. It's what God's growing. Look at your life. And every good thing that God does. He's making it grow. God is making it come forth. As you live, as you trust, as you keep on with God, as you pray, as you stay in His Word, and His Word becomes alive in you. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide, it means to live in you. My word. And then look back and see what God has done. Where he brought you from and where he's bringing you to. And what happened before and now look what God has done. And God gives you every hope. Hallelujah. He assures you. He gives you great assurance of, of, of forgiveness of your sins. Number one. Hallelujah. He gives you great assurance of your salvation. He gives you great assurance of His presence. He gives you great assurance of you have, you have great expectations lying before you because you are the plant of the Lord. Right. You are the trees of the Lord and the trees of righteousness. And you're bringing forth. You're bringing forth. Praise God. Know that every time you get on and pray, you're bringing forth. Every time you get out and pray for yourself or somebody else, you are bringing forth something. Something is being birthed. Something is growing. Not only in you, but in others. And it strengthens your faith. He said, Brother Bob, I just feel down now. You pray for me. I'll pray for you. But I'll tell you what you do. Here's the secret. Get out and pray for somebody else. Because surely there's somebody else worse off than you are. No matter how bad your situation may be, you can always find somebody who's got a worse one. No matter how bad you feel, there's always somebody else that feels worse than you do. If you don't believe it, sit down at the table and talk with them. You'll find out. I remember years and years ago on television, I'm going to say this and shut up. Years ago on television, on Saturday Night Live, I watched it many years ago, and these guys were sitting at the table talking to each other about their problems, their sicknesses and their physical, physical uh, needs. And they went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, trying to outdo each other. The guy said, well, I've been sick for three, for three weeks. And they got, well, I've been this, that, and other for, for a long time. They said, yeah, well, I broke my leg. And, uh, and uh, blah, blah. the guy said, well, yeah, I broke my neck, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and the guy said, yeah, but man, I've been sick for so long. About a month or two here has been going on. I don't know what's going on. And I said, well, I've been dead for a month. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody stand with me, praise God. <laughs> you can always find something that's got worse problems than you got. Right. So it 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 builds your faith. It it empowers you and strengthens you. Causes you to grow in your faith. When you reach out to the Lord for others. You not only have needs, but others also as well. Get yourself a burden. Cry out to God for somebody. If you don't know anybody, it's in general. There's a lot of souls out there that need Jesus. And get a, get a burden for lost souls. Be a mouthpiece. Be a prayer warrior. Whatever it is you do. And it'll be a joy to you. Because you realize when you come to the Father, hallelujah, I'm getting to come into my Father and talk to Him. Hallelujah. hallelujah. 
and he's going to hear what I got to say and he's going to answer my prayer. I know he is. I just know he is. I just know he is. I know he's going to do it. I know, I know, I know. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Whatever I ask of him, he will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that encourages you to keep on going. Praise God. And you become a powerful person in the Lord because you've learned to walk with God in faith, trusting and believing. And that fruit is just popping out all over you. Praise God. Here you need a little love, you need a little faith, you need a little kindness. I got it. Praise God. You need some money? Well, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll do what I can. <laughs> Whatever you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Freely, let me say this. Freely you have received. Freely give. Say it with me. Freely, freely. I have received. I have now freely. Father, thank you this morning for your generosity. For your liberality. As we ask in prayer for the things we need, you give so much more than what we have. So that our lives are fruitful. So that whatever you give to us, we can use it for your glory. And others may see that in our lives. And we will be blessed of God. You called us to a blessing. Not to be cursed. Not to be in confusion. Not to be in despair. Not to wonder about anything. But to be sure. Confident. Absolute. Lord. Thank you for what you've given and let us take that with us and use it for your glory so that you may be glorified, exalted, and lifted up in our lives. It will strengthen us and cause us to look ever more to you. Never looking down again. We're not going to look down anymore. We're not going to look back and down. We're looking up to you. and We're looking straight ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for staying with us. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to pray for, what was her name? Shaz in England. Yeah, Shaz. Shaz yeah. in England. Remember the lady that came here and she got saved. Thank God. She come all the way over here from England, come up here and we pray with her and the Lord saved her. And when she left here, she couldn't stop talking about how wonderful it was. She went back home to England, started telling everybody how good God was to her and what happened to her over here. My God, you can't keep her mouth shut. She's just telling everybody about the Lord. And now she's going through some troubles and problems. She's got a lot of uh, adversity and people are against her. And she's had physical problems as well. Diabetes. Okay. Let's pray for her right now. Father, be with our sister who has come to Christ. The enemy is against her for sure. And all the world's against her, Lord, but you are for If God be for, who can be against her? We just pray for her now and her strength. We lift her up as, as the children of God, as the family of God. We lift our sister up to you now. Hallelujah. Lay thy healing hand upon her and heal her and strengthen her and encourage her and lift her up, Father, in her soul and her spirit. And let her be encouraged in the Lord again as never before in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for staying with us and hanging around here and <laughs> taking the time to be here. Shake hands, be friendly, love one another.